Uh, now let's move to the special session. I like intangible cultural heritage. So as a, as a round table, um, we will have a thorough discussion uh, with experts who are working in ICH or ICH related field. Uh, so as a moderator, Professor Tong Hwan Yu from Kangkung University, uh, and then six panelists will, uh, will join this session and then having in presence. Uh, the Professor Yu, I will move to the microphone to the Yu. The floor is yours. 네, 감사합니다. Uh, yes, thank you very much for that introduction. I am Yu Dong-hwan from uh, Kongguk University and majoring uh, in cultural contents. And just two, year, two years back, you were at GGC. It was a, a offline event, but here we are online via Zoom. Uh, for about an hour, we would like to talk about ICH and tug of war as I see it under the title, I like intangible cultural heritage. So I hope that we can engage in some sincere uh, discussions. We have six panelists here with us, and I would like to kindly ask the panelists to introduce themselves individually. So first, uh, we have um, Kim, Professor Kim kyung Mr. Go Dae-yum, Mr. Kim sung yeon Mr. Kim uh, moon hyung and Mr. So jong -un and Mr. Yoon dong hwan So I'd like to uh, kindly ask you to briefly introduce yourselves. So please. I am Kim Hyung-gun, and I also work at Kijishi uh, Talk of War Museum and professor at Tongwa University. Yes, can you um, bring up the volume, please, or you can repeat uh, your introduction? Yes, I am here at Kijishi um, Chudarigi Museum. I am Kim Hyung-gun of Tongwa University. Uh, I, my expert area is oral literature as well as folklore. Very nice to meet you all. Thank you. Moving on to Mr. Ko Dae-young. Hello, I currently work at Tangji City uh, office and I work at uh, the Kijishi Takafor Museum. Very nice to meet you, Ko Dae-young. Moving on to Professor Yoon Dong-hwan. Hello, my name is Yoon Dong-hwan. I work at Cheonbu National University in the uh, Department of ICH. Thank you. Next, Kim sung hyun Hello, I'm from Ulsan Center Cultural Center. My name is Kim sung hyun and I'm also the Executive Director of the Ulsan Festival. Moon hyun Hello. We cannot offer interpretation services. I'm sorry, we cannot offer interpretation services as the uh, speaker's microphone seems to be malfunctioning. I'm sorry, but uh, you seem to be the youngest and probably the best looking uh, of us. So it is a pleasure to meet you. And lastly, is So Jung Won. Uh, very nice to meet you all. I am So Jung Won. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yes, so thank you. It's a great pleasure to have you all at this panel discussion. I know that you're all on the field, on, in schools, uh, and I know that you're full of passion on ICH. So let us, uh, well, before I go into my questions, I would like to just briefly uh, warm up with the, the topic of I like intangible cultural heritage. So if you do have an anecdote, any um, experiences that you would like to share with us on ICH, that would be great. We have Mr. Kim sung that was involved in the Ulsan Festival. So would you like to give us some information on your experience? So I'd like to go first. About 20 years ago, I believe it was. I first came across uh, Tug of War through a video format, which was shown at a video. And I think there it was in 2014, I believe, when there was a Kijishi Tug of War festival here in Tangjin. And I was here in the site. And I remember seeing the community members uh, participating in the tug of war, about 500 of them, and they had actually brought the big rope back to uh, the uh, museum. 
and this huge group of uh, community members you know, carrying the very thick robe up the hill. It was very striking for me. And I remember how many of them were also carrying snacks and traditional wine and rice wine. And that was very inspirational for me. Kim sung -yeon, you said that uh, you had this great experience witnessing the Kijishi tug of war. Uh, yeah, practice up close. What about you, Mr. Ko Dae What was your first impression of a tug of war? Can you let us know? Well, first of all, uh, Mr. Kim Sung-yeon talked about KGC Jordarigi, uh, but for me, uh, my first experience was with KGC Jordarigi out of the many tug of war modes. Kijishi is, uh, was an unfamiliar name, and all of a sudden, my responsibility became tug of war. Uh, there are people with my debt background do not have a lot of experience with tug of war, so it was quite interesting. And not only that, I was appointed to my post. Uh, it, well, the appointment was a bit delayed, but what happened was I first started off uh, uh, to familiarize uh, myself with a tug of war by twisting the rope and then uh, well right now I have immense affection for a tug of war so that was the very first experience I started off uh, trying out with twisting the ropes I can see that you have a very long history with tug of war that's great so let me ask uh, Mr. Kim hyung uh, based on my information I can I was able to see that you also have engaged in a lot of study on um, ICH, especially KGC. Yeah. So can you give us some more information, please? I'm sure that all Koreans are quite familiar with tug of war. And of course, probably elementary school at the, on field day where uh, you would try this out with your friends. It, it was, of course, a type of sport back then. And in university, I was dating and I met, I had my girlfriend at Iwa Women's University. And at Iwa Women's University, it was very much um, active in transmitting young son so I remember, I recall my experience with Yongsan Jodoregi with my girlfriend, and then it was 2006 or so. I'm sure you know Mr. Yu dong but at Korea Root, I was uh, working on creating cultural contents back then. And there, uh, we were looking into Kijisi Jodoregi to bring this and to um, engage in inventorying of Kijisi Jodoregi. So I was able to experience the uh, complete procedure and process of Chuldadigi from starting with uh, making the ropes. So I believe that it was 2006 when I first acquainted myself with Chuldadigi. Yes, I can see that you all had um, quite extensive experience with tug of war. I would like to listen to all the experiences of other panelists, but I would like to ask for your understanding because we only have 60 minutes and we have a total of six panelists and we'll have to go through the um, questions that were uh, circulated beforehand. So let us now go into uh, the questions. But just before we do that, I've listened to all of the presentations and I saw, I was able to see that um, well, the topic, the overarching top topic was sustainability for tugging rituals and games. So this will be the main theme. And within this framework, I hope that we can engage in some sincere discussion. So let us now move on to the very first question which is, uh, well, it starts off with ICH and tug of war. What kind of intrinsic appeal does uh, tug of war have amongst the other ICH elements? Uh, maybe we can hear from Mr. Kim Young-kun about its intangible aspects and then uh, the appeal that it, uh, tug of war has uh, can be explained by Mr. Yoon dong -hwan. So first, Mr. Kim Hyung-kun, please. Yes, there are many categories to uh, cultural heritage, uh, but we have uh, tangible, cultural, uh, as well as uh, natural heritage. ICH stands for intangible cultural heritage. In other words, it doesn't have a particular tangible form. And you can see that this uh, is the major distinction between tangible and intangible heritage. But at the end of the day, if we cannot convert intangible to tangible, it's very difficult to acknowledge this heritage. 
we cannot see it, we cannot feel it, so it's true that we need a conversion. In other words, we need a way of expression or a way of performance. It has to be practiced. So in that aspect, we can see that intangible and tangible cultural heritage has an interface. And I want to say that it's important to have it expressed or practiced or performed, and only then would people be able to understand its existence. And because we have that performance and that practice, we can say that it's very uh, dear to the current state, um, what happens on the field, and it can change. And uh, there are many ways to perform this. There are various forms. Uh, in Korea, there was a lot of say on the original form of heritage because uh, when it's performed on the field, it's diff- it can be different. And sometimes we were too obsessed to leave it as just one single form. But now I think we see more diversity on the field. We do see many changes and varieties. And I think that this is something natural. And I think it's noted as positive. And the appeal of ICH is that it changes, it evolves, and that we acknowledge this and that it's living. I think that is uh, the intrinsic appeal that ICH holds. So with regard to ICH, I think that you've uh, hit the core. And the appeal ICH has and the performance uh, with regard to the performance I think that there can be different views but I think uh, you're saying that this is a given so then what about uh, tug of war let us go one step further into ICH what's tug of war what's the appeal of tug of war as uh, Mr. Kim has said he talks about the specific characteristics of uh, tugging rituals and tugging games and the tug of war in particular Among all of these rituals and games, really emphasize the importance of group activity and collectivity in a sort of a unity because it, we look at these traditional skills and traditional techniques that are part of many Ice Age elements and also part of a tug of war as well. These are passed down through learning. But then if you look at performance arts or other uh, traditional practices, the tug of war element really speaks to the identity of the community and it is performed and practiced by groups so this rises to mutual trust the mutual respect and sustainable development because this is what the community works together on and i think that the tug of war element really speaks uh, to uh, those strengths thank you very much to the two speakers you said that the tug of war element is something that is alive and living that can continues to change and evolve and it is something that is used collectively, performed collectively, and it is the transmission element is also very important. I wonder if anybody else wants to talk about the topic of the strengths and the uh, charm of tug of war. Would you like to add? Mr. Kim sung what do you think? The two speakers ahead of me really did an excellent job responding to that, so I have nothing further to add. All right, so maybe you can add further later on when we ask some other questions. Let me move on to the next question then. The tug of war element is such a great form and to practice, but if we take a look at the actual ICH sites where ICH elements are practiced, there must be many challenges in the actual practicing and the actual practice of this element. And because we live in a contemporary society, uh, living in a digital era, many people might find it unapproachable or they find it a little bit difficult to completely understand. Stand. So in that regard, for Mr. Kim s o n g y o n because you were working with festivals in person, can you tell us a little bit more about the challenges that you face while working with the festival? Okay, so briefly, I would like to go over the challenges that we've had in the festival. Even if a food tastes really delicious, you have to keep tasting it uh, to make sure that it will come out very well, that it will come out very delicious. So even with our traditional culture and traditional arts, you have to experience it for yourself to truly understand and appreciate how beautiful and how charming it is to experience it and to feel it and appreciate it yourself. Uh, I think it's very difficult to get people to that level in the festivals. 
So, for example, at our festival, it's very difficult to find enough people to tug the rope because in our case, we are located in a city and we have to block traffic in different roads in the streets. And so there is some debate whether some people are critical that we are stopping traffic flow and some people don't want to be sort of mobilized to come and work in the tug of war. And in fact, there are some people who are very critical and say that they feel like this is work, that they're being put to hard labor. So that is why we've come up with a preservation committee as well, or a preservation association, uh, where these local communities can work together for the preservation and the safeguarding of the ICH element. And because we continue to work at it continuously and diligently, I think that the community members were able to recognize the importance of the ICH element. And we've witnessed some changes inside out. However, these changes are not extensive yet. There are still minor changes. And we do do witness some changes, some evolution, but I have to say there's still some challenges. I've tried to benchmark international festivals. So the Tenzen Maturi in Japan, or the Tamagotsu Maturi in Japan, or the Matsukara fe the festival in the Philippines. So we see how family communities and village communities would come together in those festivals in these international countries. For the festival period, they would come, even if they had moved elsewhere to outside of the village, outside of the community, they would all come back for the festival period, you know, to participate in the different activities. So as we... Majuri fest, tug of war as well. We would also like to hopefully invite people outside of the community and outside of the village to come into our town and our community and wear the traditional Majuri costumes and participate and practice the tug of war ritual. That is the hope, that is the ultimate aspiration that I have, and that is what I will continue to work towards and to overcome these different obstacles. The Madui festival so you've said it's important to raise awareness of the communities and with the practitioners. I know that you've been continuing to do outreach with the schools in the region. Can you tell us a little bit more about those outreach activities? There are about 100,000 uh, citizens in our village, and only about 30% are fully aware of the Amaduri tug of war. But I think that the festival really go a long way uh, to raise awareness. So in leading up to the festival, we have a festival schools or festival classes, which are very small scale classes where we provide education and different learning experiences about the element to tell more people about this so that more people can be invested and committed to the festival. Because this is located in Ulsan, which is a very big city, a metropolitan city, it must be challenging to try to host a traditional festival there. So thank you. So now we'd like to hear from the situation in Tangjin. I know that it takes a long period, a long process, you know, preparing the rope and having the actual festival. And you even have a museum here, the Kijishi Chuldarigi Museum. So can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you face in preparing for this, Mr. Ko Dae-young? Uh, 
바로 빨리 줄을 당겨야 되는데 이런 것도 있고 뭐 줄다리기 끝나고 나서 뭐 간단한 공연을 넣는데 줄다리기 끝나고 그동안 항상 집에 가셨거든요 바로 그래서 이분도 바로 가셔요 공연을 하든 말든 그래서 어떻게 보면 그런 그 새로운 변화를 주면서도 그 과거의 그런 유산, 또 과거 했었던 그런 좀 전통적인 부분을 같이 지켜가는 부분들이 좀그 고민도 돼서 되고 있는 부분입니다. 또 하나는 이제 아무래도 줄다리기가 마을의 이런 공동체의 민속이, 민속이고 축제다 보니까 이 이해관계가 굉장히 많습니다. 뭐 지역에서도 여러 가지 뭐 단체들, 뭐 축제를 운영하는 주체들 참여하는 주체들이 많다 보니까 그런 건 다양한 이해 관계자들 간의 그런 관계들 이런 것들이 뭐한 10여 년 이상 이렇게 관련 행사에 참여를 해보니까 그런 것들이 좀 쉽지 않은 부분이 있더라고요. 네. 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 감사합니다. 예. 네. 어, 지역에서의 여러 가지 이렇게 모습들과 어, 오버랩되면서 어려움이 많이 있으실 거라고 예상이 됩니다. 자 마지막으로 어 제가 이분은 2010년 전후로부터 어 인연이 돼서 어이 아리랑 유랑단을 비롯해서 어전 세계적인 활동 그리고 이 지금 현재는 문카데미 그래서 젊은 분들과의 소통을 전통 문화를 가지고 해 주신 문현우 선생님 그 활동 과정에서의 어려움 이런 것들은 어떤 게 있을 수 있을까요? 네, 우선 우리 그동안 교육기관에 특히 제 목소리 잘 들리시나요? 예, 조금 울리는데요. 예, 예. I'm sorry, 아, but your voice is ringing. 상황이 좀 불안정한 것 같아요. 네, 최대한 제가 잘 해보겠습니다. I'm sorry, but 어, we cannot offer interpretation services. 10년 전이 But uh, the speaker's microphone could, seems to be uh, cutting off. 10년이 들어가고 있고 근데 이제 제가 감사하게도 저도 물론 형님들과 이제 나이대가 벌써 30대 중반이 되니까 격차가 좀 나, 나지만 가장 큰 문제는 이 전통이라고 하면 축축과 어떤 우리의 문화유산의 결합이 있다고 생각을 합니다. 그래서 이러한 자리에 좀더 젊은 층이나 청춘 많이 참여한다면 이 전통과 이 콜라보를 잘 이룰 수 있을 거라고 생각하고요. 어, 아직까지 우리가 유산이라고 하면 참나나 이제 올드하다 이런 분들이 굉장히 많은데 어, 좀 친근한 원인과 함께 우리가 좀 현대와 많이 호흡하고 소통하는 게 시, 더 사실 중요하다고 좀 생각합니다. 그래서 공공에서도 무중과 계승이라는 차원에서 이제 접근하고 있긴 하지만 현 세대와의 어떤 접점이 좀 부족해 보이는 것이 저는 이제 계승에서 현대적으로 좀잘 공학과 고민이 필요해 보입니다. 그래서 이러한 부분은 좀 기존의 어떤 부분을 제가 했던 활동사들을 참고해서 얘기를 이어가겠습니다. 네, 네. 선생님 조금 이렇게 끊어져서 I'm sorry, but you keep cutting off. You're uh, you having connectivity problems. But I think you were saying that these different transmission activities of a traditional culture and the arts are being led by the public sector, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of a meeting room with the young generation. So we should try to identify ways for the young generation to find this. more accessible in in a way that is more familiar to them. Yes, that's correct. I think that if we were to expand from that thought, I know that Mr. Yoon Dong-han, you have been involved in local research and field research and education and working with NGOs. So if we were to expand this further, I know that uh, there's a lot of transmission or utilization activities in the field. Can you tell us a little bit more about the challenges that you have uh, gone through personally? Yes, I, listen, I uh, listened well to Mr. Moon's uh, presentation. When I heard what he uh, said, I think that uh, when it comes to the uh, transmission of these traditional culture and the arts, there seems to be a disconnect between 
the people who practice it right now and the younger generation, especially in the contemporary era. Uh, there is this uh, disconnect, especially in terms of the communication and outreach with the other people, especially with the younger generation. That is something that you will try to uh, change. I have to say that I agree with that as well. When we talk about ICH, we think about the past or tradition. So these are all things that are not very relevant to the contemporary era. We typically think of them as something that's in the past, you know, that's very fossilized. So as Mr. Moon has said, this ICH, we have to try to figure out ways to make ICH relevant in the contemporary era so that make, we can make use of them and we can communicate ICH better for people living in the present day and now. So that is uh, something that we have to really think about. And that is something that we have to engage in more research with. So we have to try to get closer to the actual uh, site and the actual uh, places where this is practiced. Yes, I think that in our first round of discussions, Mr. Kim hyung Gun said that ICH is something that is alive. And Mr. Yoon, you talked about how uh, this is something that we have to pass on and transmit very carefully. And I think that we can see more challenges down the road. And of course, these are ICH elements, so they continue to evolve and change. So we have to be receptive to these changes and the way that these elements continue to evolve and transform. So with that, we'd like to move on to the next round of discussions. Oh, I know that there are these difficulties when it comes to ICH. Oh, depending on the very specific forms, of ICH that gives rise to different ways of practice as well. Oh, we have to look at the different types of expression and different types of practice uh, that is tied in with a different form of the ICH element. Oh, Mr. Kim hyung maybe you can first of all talk about the different categories at the UNESCO level. So in the past, when we talk about oral literature and language, these have not been seen as independent separate categories in and of themselves. So when we talk about mass dance or folk songs or shamanism and other performance art elements, 
We see them as different elements that are practiced. So they have not been seen as separate categories in the past, but nowadays we have seen all of these different work and activities to try to see them as individual categories and separate categories. And this is an expansion of the different categories and the range of categories that we've seen recently. So what are we going to do to make use of these six umbrella, six major categories, and I think that is a fundamental question. So the rights should be kept as rights, and rituals should be kept as rituals, the performance should be kept as performance. It'd be great if we can try to keep within the confines of the form, but because the, we shouldn't really focus confine them to a form, but confine them to a kind of content. So with the same content, you can try to uh, transform it in different ways. And it would really depend on the end user. How does the end user see that content? How does this end user want to make use of the content? It could be a YouTube or it could be a web content or it could be an offline performance art piece with the same content. So I think if we can take a look at this with the perspective that it's, you know, from the content-minded perspective, then that would allow us to be more free instead of going to confine it to a particular form. That's very academic and a little bit boring and mundane for the average public. So as the research and academics, we have to move away from focusing too much on confining it to a particular form because that will not make it popular. If we want to try to get closer to the audience, we have to figure out from the outside in and see what exactly is the medium that the consumers would like. So we have to take the opposite perspective. Thank you very much for that keen comment. Whether it be Korea or if we look at the categorization of UNESCO, both are important. Content,或者是content下面的平台,或者是环境的这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，这些，
for children. And for my generation, we have experience with traditional play. Of course, tug of war was always included in the things that we did at school, but now we see different varieties. So it's important to offer the opportunity to try this out. But see, I remember that uh, in the presentation, somebody noted that tug of war is already included in the curriculum. So I think that it's important to uh, enhance exposure to tug of war. Next, I would like to ask Mr. Yoon dong Han for your comments, please. I think that depending on the range or the scope of ICH, the transmission and the practice are also very different. And this has been emphasized uh, by other speakers ahead of me, but the uh, transmitter and the community, I think that if there is a gap between the two, then we have to make sure that this gap is narrowed. And that is particularly important when it comes to the utilization of these ICH elements. And something that we should be mindful of in terms of orientation of uh, where ICH should be headed in terms of its direction in the future. The, the what UNESCO is also talking about when it talks about uh, cultural heritage for the humanity, uh, about its universality and its shared value with the humanity, we have to think about how we're going to uphold uh, these elements while also transmitting them and in making use of these elements, perhaps so this kind of thinking can be helpful. Mr. Yun, I think in uh, your comments, you talked about this keyword of uh, community spirits. And if we were to connect that with ICH, and if we were to approach uh, ICH with community spirits and try to see how we can make use of the ICH elements there, uh, what are some of the different things that we have to think about? So I talked about this gap that exists between uh, those of us who want to experience the ICH elements and the actual uh, holders and the practitioners. I don't think that there is a actual difference between the two groups in certain ICH elements. So for example, if you take a look at tug of war, there are people who practice tug of war, but these people are also the audience members. They enjoy the tug of war experience. And this is similar with Madui as well, where the local community members, they participate in the tug of war ritual, regardless of their gender or their age, and they participate in uh, this ritual and go towards a shared goal, a shared objective. But we don't really see a lot of that these days. For many of other ICH elements, the two groups are very much delineated from each other. So the people who transmit, the people who practice, uh, there is this big gap between the two. So we have to emphasize where we're trying to head in the future with the ICH element and also try to emphasize uh, this shared respect and mutual understanding instead of delineating between these different groups. So thank you very much for that. Mr. Boon Hyun I think that uh, from yourself, you are someone who actually practices this element. You're not necessarily as a researcher, and because you are in the field, you get to observe uh, the different forms of the element in actual practice. What were some of the uh, observations that you were able to make in how this element is being used and how it's being practiced? Because we talked about how different elements, given their different forms, they can be practiced in different ways. So what are your opinions uh, regarding that? I think, as I mentioned before, when we talk about heritage, we think about uh, transmission, and that is really the uh, focus of many people. People think that if you neglect this ICH element now, then it would have no future. And there's a lot of uh, public sector support to allow the ICH elements to continue to thrive. Uh, we have to come up with many different cultural and uh, entertainment experiences for the current generation to enjoy. 
I think that uh, Professor Chu yong -tae of Seoul National University, he's an anthropologist, and he published a book called The Future of the Market. And I think that uh, this book has a lot of food for thought for people like us. For example, he came up with this Lexus diagram where the culture that people liked in their teens, in their teens, even after they become 30, 40 years old, that same culture continues to be passed down in a very organic way. So, for example, we liked to play StarCraft when I was a teenager and when I was in my 20s. But I still play when I'm in my 30s and my 40s. So you still play the same game that you used to play as a teenager. So also from a demographic point of view, we see a lot of urbanization. And in fact, in 2030, when there's going to be 7 million more added to the population, then we can try to find ways of making use of the tug of war element because it really emphasizes the community spirit. And if this tug of war element continues to just be something that the elder population only enjoys, then will that be transmitted in an organic way? I don't know if I can give you some case examples right now. Yes, you can move on and talk about some case examples in the field. So from my experience, when I turned, you know, mid-20s, late-20s, and I first started my culture arts agency, I wanted to make traditional culture and traditional arts fun. So I, I went to Shincheon at the time. And this was before COVID-19. People were drinking in bars late into the night, and people were spilling out into the streets, and some of them were vomiting on the side of the streets. And I asked myself, why are the young generation in Korea wasting their youth, just drinking away their lives? And I myself was quite young. I was in my 20s as well. Uh, but I thought it was really strange to see that. Or either they were drinking or they were going to all of these internet cafes and or playing online games. So I thought that hmm, maybe we can make use of traditional art and traditional culture. So maybe we also use that as an inspiration to plan this Yudnori competition using a traditional game. We've done that for about five, six years. And so many young people gathered in the Culture and Arts Hall in Jeonju. And these competitions were very successful, which gave me the lesson that the young people they don't necessarily see traditional arts and traditional games as something that's very boring. It's just that they didn't have the opportunity to enjoy them in the past. So if we were to just continue to keep and maintain the traditional game and the traditional culture as they are, but come up with different opportunities for people to experience them, that'd be fun. So for example, we come up with this best dressed idea where people can come in costume or they can you know, change around their hairstyle uh, to look like the youth sticks. And so that was also a very popular idea with the youth. If you go to YouTube, you see a lot of people who put up videos. These are health and fitness freaks. They, they love to work out. They spend a lot of time and effort in working out. So if we tell them that maybe if you play tag of war, what are the muscles that you will stimulate? What are the muscles that you can build if you practice tug of war? So maybe we can also think about tug of war contests or bodybuilder contests using tug of war. So we have to expand our thinking to try to come up with different creative opportunities for people to practice uh, this kind of tug of war ritual that is outside of transmission and development of ICH, which is also important from the academic sense. But if we can also think about it in a two-track approach and make it enjoyable and fun with entertainment value, then I think that it could be really more established itself. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moon. I think that these days when we talk about cultural appreciation, uh, with your example of uh, Yutnuri, with the traditional folk game, I thought that was interesting because with the tug of war ritual, it's not about winning or losing. You are trying to enjoy yourself in the process or maybe have fun and laugh. And, you know, when adults see ASMR, they think that this is such a weird trend. But in fact, you can also enjoy ASMR with tug of war ritual. Maybe the different texture of the rope or the sounds that you make, they can have fun experiences for you. So, 
I think that this is a good segue for us to get a little bit more into specifics. So we want to try to make this more popular and even think about globalizing uh, this tug of war ritual, this tug of war game. Uh, I know that Mr. Sa, you've come up with a children's book on a tug of war. Uh, what are some tips that you can give us on what should we do to make sure that uh, this this uh, cultural heritage is transmitted for a very long time. Uh, and if we were to think about ways to popularize this element, especially with children, what are the efforts that you think are needed?
a holistic perspective. When we're sick, we talk about the whole body, not about just a particular organ. And in the same vein, I believe that for cultural heritage uh, to be more familiar for the mass public, we need to understand what went wrong. Tug of war is all about people. Without people, it can't be done. But if we have no people in the villages if, due to urbanization, uh, it cannot be transmitted. Right now in the villages, uh, they find it very difficult to twist the ropes and to carry it. It's so difficult because uh, there are no younger generation there. So sometimes they would need to use excavators to uh, transport uh, this twisted rope. Uh, just moving the rope two meters, it would take a half a day with the, only the elderly left in the villages. So culture is all about people, and without people, there is no culture. So we need human beings involved. In order to overcome the problem at hand, it's not uh, just something about cultural policy, policy making. Culture cannot be solved only with culture. It's a holistic challenge where we need multiple solutions. And if we want to find the right solution, I remember, I recall what Mr. Moon said, but we always uh, talk about amongst ourselves, uh, why is it disregarded? However, there are those that make the markets. There are market makers and market makers need uh, game rules. As you know, Korea is very well known for BTS. And I think that this on the other way around can be a weak point for our traditional culture because with BTS, it may seem that traditional culture has to compete with BTS. For instance, if we look at uh, the local festivals when they want to put together programs, uh, sometimes they would think that uh, it would be better to just invite celebrities. But, you know, this is not a level playing, playing field. It's very difficult to compete with this modern pop culture in Korea that's gaining fame. We need to change the system. Or, and if not, there's no way for us to promote traditional culture. And it's important to break away from this uh, concept that uh, it should be uh, shoulder to shoulder with uh, modern pop culture. Traditional culture cannot be pop culture. So maybe we're being, um, we're maybe we're being too ambitious. I think that's not something that can be done. So system-wise, it's not a level playing field. So we need to acknowledge that. So because I am a scholar and uh, because I am a uh, university professor, I thought about what kind of role can I play to solve this with cultural contents. I think that uh, humanities is gaining more popularity. So I believe that scholars also need to understand how they can make their teachings into cultural contents. Up till now, scholars were focused on B2B. In other words, it was a business to business approach. They don't have an interface uh, with uh, the end user. It was just about uh, finding a way to provide information to the producers of contents. So in other words, it was a B2B. Their approach was not B2C. However, cultural contents is about the end user, whether it be scholars, whether it be content creators or producers. It's important to understand the original source and convert this into cultural contents. We need the person with the understanding that can do uh, this full realm of things. In the past, all you needed to do was understand the original source and just process. But if you cannot understand the original source, it cannot be processed. But let's say that uh, the original source is very naive, it's very raw, then you need to convert this. But many people find this difficult to do. So I think that it's not about methodology. It's about how we can put this into action. Simply put, we make everything too difficult and complicated. The papers, the dissertations are way too difficult. It's only something that's done within the academic circle and cannot be shared. But I think that what we have to do is study, uh, research, and then make this more familiar, make it approachable. Uh, the academic circle right now in Korea is only focused on papers and dissertations and making it more complex and more difficult. So I think that we need to uh, make it uh, in uh, or write our papers in layman terms 
to make it approachable. And back to cultural content, we have Mr. Yu dong Hwan and a number of experts on cultural context. But once again, cultural content is about understanding the original source. If not, you cannot convert this into something that can be approached by the public. So I think that those with a historical background, those that have expertise in humanities also need to understand cultural content because without that full understanding, cultural content cannot be created. So in our sphere, sometimes we're way too academic, especially in the literature sphere, but we also need to understand how it should be utilized, how it can be utilized. I teach uh, folklore or oral literature, and when I conduct my classes, I just don't focus on the understanding uh, of uh, this plastic work. It's about making this into contents. So let's say if there is uh, original uh, literature, I talk about how this can be into con put into contents. Can it be an animation, a webtoon, or um, any different modes of media? Yeah, what would happen is I would offer a storyline. Oh, I would like to ask for your understanding. Can you wrap up in just one minute because we are we do have a time limit. Yes. Yeah, so what we're trying to what I'm trying to do is utilize various modes and forms to create this into contents. So I think the solution lies in what we can do in action. If we cannot change the system. System, then I think we should try, uh, we should see what we can do. So I also would like to promise that I would try to change what I can do uh, in the educational sector. Yes, I can see that uh, you're trying to find a way to convert uh, this heritage uh, into various contents. And it's not about trying to just put pop culture and traditional culture shoulder to shoulder. It's about finding a way to uh, enhance the diversity of traditional culture to convert this into different contents. And also, you've mentioned about the importance of understanding the original source if we want to have it more approachable for the mass public. Yes, thank you. Let us now move on to Mr. Kudae Young. Uh, uh, is an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. So now it's not just about popularization, it's about globalization. Uh, since um, you're studying, this is your field of expertise, I would like to understand what kind of plans do you have to globalize Kijishi Jullarigi? Well, Mr. Kim Young gun has made it very grand, and uh, he sounds it's so uh, elegant, so I don't know what to say, but Kijishi Chudarigi, I think it all starts off with breaking away from Kijishi Chudarigi. What I mean is just recently, uh, the experts of Kijishi Chudarigi or the practitioners would say that we have a thicker rope, we have more uh, members, we have more participants. So it, it was true that they always tried to say that they uh, were more superior. But if uh, I believe that this approach is, uh, can be very restricting. It's not just about having more participants. It's not like it's of lesser value with less participants. So it's about collaborating with various types of talking rituals and games, games around the world, rather than stating that one is superior over the other. So Kijishi Chudarigi, we have well, various associations, safeguarding associations and transmission associations. And um, it's uh, about collaborating, cooperating, not stating that one is better than the other. But I want to say that it's all about cultural diversity. They have different modes. Uh, it looks different, different form, and maybe different rules. But uh, we do have the same common values. There's a universal value to Chuldariki or tugging rituals and games. So I think it's all about being in this together, go hand in hand to communicate and interact uh, with various forms of tugging rituals and games. And we're trying to do that at our um, Kijishi Chuldariki Safeguarding Association. Yes, thank you. We've heard from our um, six panelists. And uh, it would be great if we ha can have a drink of makgeolli and be together to talk about Chuldariki. But unfortunately, I think we have to wrap up this session because our one hour is over. We have many participants online. But what I would like to ask you is to continue on to uh, show your affectionate interest towards uh, tugging rituals and games. As was mentioned by Mr. Gode Young, if we break away from um, well this type of heritage, there's a there's another new heritage that can 
Um, so, Jurdarigi or Tugging Rituals and Good Games, I truly hope that uh, it's uh, loved by, the, uh, by all people around the world. So, with that, uh, thank you very much to all of our panelists and thank you to all of the staff for making uh, the event possible. So, yes, back to Ms. So Jin Young. Thank you very much. And with that, let us conclude this spe uh, special session. Thank you very much, Professor, and uh, all the panelists. Actually, uh, the one-hour discussion is not easy, but uh, I really was got into the discussion and learned a lot. We just uh, started the discussion from the personal experience, but they touched upon the uh, critical viewpoints and the, the macro viewpoint for the utilization of the talking rituals and games for the future also. Uh, so uh, from here, we'll close the day one of the 2021 International Symposium on Talking Rituals and, uh, for, for its sustainability, living with ICH. We will meet together. We will all meet together tomorrow at the same time, 2 p.m. Korean Standard Time. Thank you very much for everyone for enjoying, and then have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>